Ah, uh, nothing beats completing an awesome sci-fi RPG than having a picnic on a hostile alien planet in another timeline. Of course. Why else do I now keep a skill on me? Now, pass me one of them turkey legs, will ya? Oh, fine, I'll get it. Uh, huh? Hey, this isn't my picnic basket. When did... where... Yogi! Welcome to the second half of Season 4! Well, I was off having a good time after completing one of the best Wii U titles, if not one of the best games of 2015 I ever played, and I come home with this. Yogi Bear, or rather the 2010 live-action movie adaptation, directed by Eric Brevig, who also did Journey to the Center of the Earth prior to this. Like some movies I covered before, it is also based off an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. Now while I still have a preference for the Flintstones and Scooby-Doo, I can see why Yogi Bear would be among the more popular choices to create works for, since he actually got several shows, specials, animated movies, one of which me and Mikey Insanity covered, which you can see here, and there's even a spoof on Adult Swim that I might look at in the future. But for now, since a certain bear was ever so generous to trade my picnic basket for his movie, which by the way was made by Rhythm and Hughes Studios, who also did Hop that we covered, we're going to look and see what happens when you try and pull another Alvin and the Chipmunks. With that, let us begin the Yogi Bear movie. We open at Jellystone Park, where of course the narration provides the typical setup it needs to show that even though this park looks nice and reserved, there's just one problem. It's home to Yogi Bear. Boo boo! I think it's time I introduce myself to that picnic basket! You know, Yogi, we could just hunt for food. All the other animals do. Boo boo! A picnic basket has everything a bear needs! And I'm not just talking about the treats and snack type goodies! No! A picnic basket holds a lot more than that. It holds... dreams. How appropriate that a dim-witted bear that thinks he's smarter than normal bears be voiced by Dan Aykroyd. And considering after what happened in Coneheads, it wouldn't be too hard to see a similarity in their intelligence. Believe it or not though, Boo Boo is voiced by Justin Timberlake. Yep, one of the NSYNC vocalists is playing a little bear with a voice that, unless you read the credits, well, you'd still be in disbelief. As for Ranger Smith, who is basically the Dave counterpart as Yogi is to Alvin in a way, he's played by Tom Cavanaugh who you might recognize as the Reverse Flash from the Flash TV series. He has to put up with Ranger Jones, played by T.J. Miller, who wants to be an aspiring ranger like Smith, but is clearly overthinking his goals, not helped by a performance that's... eh... Sounds cooler. I mean, we're park rangers, sir. You know, to protect and preserve. Did you just make that motto up? Yeah, I did. You like it? Ranger Jones, you know that... Well, being a park ranger, it, it's not about models. It's about keeping the park safe. That's where the glory is. It just doesn't click with me. Like, it doesn't have quite the same charm as with the first live-action Flintstones movie where the actors feel like they are the character. Or that they embrace it. Here, the human actors are just playing it up straight without so much as putting feeling into it. Like, 
Smith should sound just a bit louder and with more authority than his low tone and mostly annoyed personality. Yogi and Boo Boo are okay. They sound like what they should, but they really need to get some chemistry going if they want to make the joke stick. Anyway, they get visited by Rachel Johnson, played by Anna Faris, who was Sam Sparks in the Cloudy and Meatball movies, as well as Jeanette in the live-action Chipmunk movies, who wants to film a documentary here in the park. And of course, because they felt the need to, they pretty much make her the love interest, since she does the same kind of things he does. Ranger Smith, at your service. So uh, you, you want to film a documentary in Jolly Stone? Yes, I sent you a letter about a month ago, uh, written on a piece of bark. That was you? Oh. Yes. I'm sorry about that. I was in Sumatra living among the orangutans at the time, and they get very nervous if they spot anything from the modern world. Really? Wow. That's amazing. Well, then what did you use for ink? Bird poop and spit. Of course. When live action, you gotta throw in this kind of stuff at every opportunity. I was hoping to shoot a local species, something to really capture the beauty of a national park. That's terrific. What animal were you thinking? I heard you had an unusual brown bear. Brown bear? Yes. When the talks, those are so rare. Rare, huh? I'll keep this in mind for later. For now, we get introduced to Mayor Brown, played by Andrew Dolly, who finds that his city is on the verge of bankruptcy. We're a city. Cities don't go bankrupt. Tell that to Detroit. And needs to find a way to earn money while also running for governor. And in typical movie antagonist fashion, he is too ignorant of his own policy that caused this to happen. <sighs> Pretty much. As he makes plans to sell Jellystone Park so it becomes a logging site, the movie tries to build Rachel as a super nature lover who seems fluent in animal behaviors and does extreme things like live with bears. Okay. I have some fantastic river otters you could film instead. I could probably get a hat and tie on the slow one. No, you know, I really, really like these two. Would you guys mind if I shoot you? Huh? <laughs> okay, that was funny. Points to you when needed. And Smith is showing how desperate he is for women. And Yogi... What you need to do is follow her around for two days, making snorting sounds, then fight any male that looks at her. And then, of course, urinate on her to mark her as your territory. Just... no. No, don't ever do that again. For the documentary, Rachel installed a camera in Boo Boo's tie so the perspective will be as natural as it can be without human interference. That's fine, but you do realize that if the bears can talk, they can also think. And when they think, they think of stuff like Urinate on her to mark her as your territory! And it might put some people off. Mayor Brown arrives to inform Smith that he's closing the park since they haven't made a profit in 10 years, while being as snobby as he could possibly be. But since Smith seems to care that much for the park, and that it is about to be 100 years old, he asks for a week to make a profit to keep it going. So Smith in turn goes to Yogi, who was just introducing Boo Boo to his new flying machine, which he discovers and confiscates, to tell him that the park might be rezoned if they don't make profits, so he has to stop stealing picnic baskets. Good thought, Cooker, sir! I can't help it if my melon is full of smart juice! <laughs> Yogi, your melon is hurting this park. There are repercussions to stealing people's picnic baskets. Not in my experience, sir! Oh. 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 <laughs> On the other hand... Of course they would use the Wilhelm scream of all things, because why not continue the trend of cliched movie jokes by adding in that overused scream? <laughs> well, the only thing worse would be a slow plot. I mean, the pacing isn't too bad right now, but I think they're putting a bit too much time with establishing Jones as the guy who tries too hard while being awkward, as well as establishing a romance between Smith and Rachel. Although, at the same time, I don't mind the idea of giving Smith some backstory, as it can make him a bit more complex, but if you're going to do it, you should be able to relate or feel for it. Hell, the only thing I can relate to with him are his reactions to Yogi's shenanigans, as I think they also represent the audience watching this at the time. I like big butts and I cannot lie, you other brothers can't deny. I want a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get 
No, that's not gonna work either, Yogi. Look, if you're going to update something, you need to be considerate of both the source material and what can pass for humor without it clashing. Paddington, for instance, had it right where the humor it had works with both the character and setting without it becoming obnoxious. This, though, is being obnoxious. This sort of humor does not always work. Not for everyone. You might get a few laughs on some parts, but don't just settle for one group. Try actually finding humor that works for all. Yogi giving Smith money he got out of the donation box? That's a good start. A big butt joke is not. And I guess Rachel is in on Smith's park dilemma now and is willing to help in attracting people. So they get on that. That is great. <laughs> How did we pay for it? Oh, we didn't. It was some fast food restaurant, but I rearranged the letters right before the plane took off. Jones is out doing some marketing for Smith when Mayor Brown arrives and learns what they're trying to do. Now, even though he still seems to act like this won't work anyway because he thinks he knows how people think, he decides to take advantage of Jones's desire to become head park ranger by making sure this event doesn't succeed. Jones is hesitant at first until he learns that it might take 12 years to become head ranger. Now he starts trying things. Fox left. Um, uh, forecast call for thunderstorms. Uh, severe lightning. I fear for your young ones. Uh, Brown fireworks. I'm afraid it's just sparkly left. Sir, I tried. All last night I spent taking out flyers. I blocked the entrance with a vehicle so as to back up traffic. I even hung up rabid squirrel signs everywhere. Those were hand-drawn. Nothing is working. And by trying, I mean failing like a chump. But he does get one idea. Fireworks ready to go. Even Yogi's staying out of the way. <sighs> Yogi. Speaking of Yogi, he copes exactly how I figured they would make him. And they have donuts. Donuts! Yogi, what are you doing? So Jones shows up to trick Yogi and Boo Boo into thinking that Smith is losing it and that this festival will fail just so it can get Yogi into wanting to enact on his plans for helping. In the meantime, Smith tries to convey his feelings for Rachel while getting another example of the movie relating to the audience and their reaction to it at this point. But uh oh, Yogi is up to no good, or is it? <laughs> Not be happening. Oh, it's happening. Oh, I'm an unstoppable water skiing machine. <laughs> huh, a crazy scheme going right for once? This isn't like Yogi at all. Usually his schemes end in disaster. Oh wait, here it comes. Epic save and epic fail. Look out! Bad CGI rockets! This could not have gone more perfectly. <laughs> I put people's lives in danger! I'll be a great governor. And after all that, we get the typical guilt bomb that only after something terrible happens, instead of the usual times bad things happen anyway. That's the problem. All the thinking. Hey, you, you know it would be great if you didn't think. If you could just be a regular bear. You know, sitting in the woods, minding his own business. But nope, you're different. You're smart. And you'd rather spend your days being selfish and destructive while everyone else pays the price. But 
I guess it wasn't enough screwing up my life. No, this time you had to go and bring down this entire park. So tell me, Yogi, how smart are you now? So Smith is being relocated to Evergreen Park, which as it turns out isn't really a park anyway, while Jones is promoted to Head Ranger. His confidence seems to be broken now as he's decided to split with Rachel as he was a failure. Yogi decides to become a regular bear after realizing his enhanced intelligence only makes things worse for people. And Jones decides to flaunt his new position by taking the armadillo out for a spin. this park is going to close soon, right? You're only going to have this job for a few days, then what will you do, dumbass? Actually, wait, did he not ever get the memo that the park was closing? I am closing your park down. He did! And at no point did Brown tell him that the park wouldn't close if he did what he asked. Are you seriously telling me this guy is so stupid that he doesn't realize Brown is cutting down his park? Stupid! You're so stupid! After Boo Boo sees the forest being cut down, he finds Yogi and tries to convince him to save Jellystone. Yeah, it's only after he shows him the destruction that Yogi springs into action. Nobody is gonna hurt Jellystone! Where are we going, Yogi? We can't get Jellystone back alone, Boo Boo! We're gonna go get Huckleberry Hound, Quick Draw McGraw, and Snagopus! No, they're just gonna find Smith. They reach the city where I guess no one seems to mind the walking, talking bears in their midst. Just like in the cartoon, okay, you got me there. And they end up finding him and inform him on what's going on. The only thing that will kick Smith into gear is an unconventional motivational speech from a con artist bear. Mr. Ranger, I've learned two things from stealing picnic baskets. One, Light mayonnaise is not nearly as good as regular mayonnaise. And two, you can't fail if you never stop trying. You have to fight for the things you love, whether it's a park, a girl, or a roast beef sandwich. Don't give up now. We're all Jellystone's got. You're right, Yogi. Jellystone's too important to give up on. We gotta try. Come on. So our heroes return to Jellystone to find Rachel using her nature experience to threaten scrawny assistant man into letting her in. And now, awkward romantic setup. It's, it's just when I lost Jellystone, I, I felt like such a failure. But losing you has felt much, much worse. I'm like, I'm like a genus without a phylum. That's the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to me. Um, we're still here. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, bad perspective on the CGI bears. One moment they look like they're really close, next shot they aren't even in frame. I knew the effects weren't all that good, but geez, better consistency, please. So, why was Rachel trying to get back into the park? Well, apparently, after reviewing the footage she got from Boo Boo's tie camera, she spotted that CGI frog turtle. Which, as it turns out, is called a frogmouth turtle. And? Fetus swine how. But those are extinct. For a hundred years, but apparently one still exists. And he lives in there. But they won't let me through the gates to go find him. But if Jellystone has an endangered species living in it, then... It has to be protected as a park. That's the law. This makes me question the earlier statement in regards to Yogi being a rare talking bear. First of all, does that imply that there are other talking bears in this world besides these two? I mean, I do know Cindy is one, but they never introduce her here. But unless there were other bears from the old Yogi programs, I would probably imagine these two are the only known talking bears within this continuity. Now, disregarding the obvious that, realistically, scientists would be on them for study, Shouldn't this park already be protected by law for having the two only known talking animals ever? I mean, endangered extinct animal is one thing, 
but unusual and never seen elsewhere variation of animal? That's another! Well, regardless, they show the turtle to everyone, that means the park is saved. But there's one problem. Rachel had to tell the assistant this fact. Oops. An extinct turtle? That's great! Visitors will come from miles around to see an endangered species. Are you even trying, TJ Miller? Your performance as Tough Nut was better than this. So, of course, Brown tricks Jones into getting the turtle so they can get rid of it. At this point, they have no way in, so Smith decides to sneak in using old routes he's aware of. Jones already found the turtle, due to an earlier tip by Yogi himself. These people have no idea where my cave is. The turtle's in the Talking Bear's cave. Copy that. So to reach him, they pull out the flying machine Yogi made earlier, so they can try and swipe it from above. Brown and his cohorts arrive to seize the turtle, and it's here Jones realizes that something must be up. Turtle house. They're building one. Oh, who is? Builders. Are, are you sure you're trying to protect the turtle? Yeah, we love turtles. Then you won't mind if I hold on to him until I notify the Wildlife Federation, right? All right. <laughs> You're gonna find this out in a few hours anyway, so I might as well tell you. We gotta lose this turtle so we can sell the logging rights to the park. Logging? The whole park? Yeah, but who cares? It's still a park, just without trees. And it only took them this long to realize that these people are bad and convert over. No wonder you didn't make Head Ranger the normal way. You're too stupid to live! Well, after a close call on the dive, they get the turtle but now have to return to Smith, which results in the obvious. Break the plane, form a boat. Get some aid, pull them in. Go downstream, get caught in the rapids. Anything else I miss? I thought we were done with turtle ass back in Over the Hedge. Guess I was wrong. Of course, through obvious green screening, they go over the falls, but get saved by a rather strong tree branch. They run into Jones, who offers to ride them to the conference in record speed, just so they can stop Brown from signing that deal. Do you think I care about what the law says? Or about some endangered frog mouth turtle? Or some stupid park for families to have a picnic in? I care about power, you pinheads! Blah, blah, blah. It's all about the power. Politics, money, whatever. Also, this plan backfired on them, I guess. Since for one thing, that means putting up with the guards, and because Yogi is too dumb for his own good, he tosses the turtle to the assistant. I can still tell them what you did. <sighs> oh yeah? Without that turtle or a scrap of evidence, go right ahead. They have freaking video footage. And don't tell me the people would just pass it off as a CGI turtle, because that's only meant to fool the audience into thinking it's real. Just as the people in this world would think it's a real turtle, and not some ugly CGI creature. Well, fortunately, the assistant loses the turtle so they can always get him back, and in the meantime, they just now realize they have freaking video footage to show, so while Yogi distracts the guards, they replace the so badly dramatic political propaganda that you'd be an idiot to believe was real. I'm protecting our natural resources. You think I care about what the law says? Hmm? Or about some endangered frog mouth turtle or some stupid park? No. I was expecting the earlier footage with the turtle and not his confession. Yet. But whatever, the park is saved and Brown is assumingly arrested. Hopefully for the $1,000 check for everyone crap that's probably a fraud anyway. And eventually the park is reopened with people coming for the turtle. Yogi and Smith make up. And we, of course, end with business as usual for the big lug of a bear. Lady. <sighs> Yo, yeah! Oh, he said it! And it's not as iconic as when Dave yells his line! And that was Yogi Bear. And no wonder it didn't get a sequel. It just didn't catch the spark that the live-action Chipmunk movie did, in regards to attracting a younger audience. Obviously, this movie follows many of the cliches you see in kids' movies, where they try to be into what they think the young folk are into, but by using an old icon from the previous generation. Though, unlike with Alvin, where you could pull it off given the resources, all Yogi has are his quirks as a character, which is slapstick and witty humor. However, the slapstick doesn't come off as satisfying along with the humor. It hardly feels witty and feels forced, as are the performances at times, 
Jones in particular, I just didn't see trying while Smith lacks the authoritative charm. The overall plot otherwise, it would be fine for a movie plot like this, but it just needed a lot more work to make it the funny movie it could have been. Finally, the effects in this movie definitely feel dated, especially with the CGI material. It just doesn't blend well with this environment. Like, I think they worked it better with the chipmunks given their general setting, but otherwise it just doesn't look good. That's really this movie in a nutshell. It's just not a good reinventing of the Yogi Bear character. You're better off watching the old cartoons, films, and shorts than sit through this again. I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way.